Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to your C++ tutorial series. In this video, we are going to overload the insertion operator. So basically that will allow us to basically output a user directly. So for example, we've been outputting data members such as method calls or values, but what if I just wanted to output user one? This is a user here. Can we output that and just then just get a pretty output in the console? Well, you actually can, and that's what we're gonna be talking about in this video. Now, please make sure you watch the previous video. That's going to give you the foundation of operator overloading. That's because this video is going to get a little bit more complicated. Unfortunately, overloading the insertion operator is a, is a little bit more of a step, but we, we should be able to do it if we work together. So let's just put our brain power together, focus on solving this problem, and I think we'll get through it. Now, before we get started, please check out our sponsor, Embarcadero Rad Studio. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ code base and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. So first, let's clean this up just a little bit. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have one user, and what I wanna do is I just wanna output this user. So we can say, see out user, and then I'll put an inline at the end. So make sure you're in the right folder and then say G++ main.cpp, and I'm gonna use the C++11 flag, like so. All right, we got an error, that's great. So if you scroll up for like 10 years, you'll see invalid operands to binary expression, the same error we got in the previous video. So how do we go about overloading this? Well, it's a little bit different because in the previous video, we were doing the plus operator and the comparison operator. And if you remember, it looked a little something like this. We had pose one, and then we would compare that to pose two. And you can see that on both sides of the operator, we had entities of the same type. These were both positions, but now it's a little bit different because in this scenario we have C out on one end and we have a user on the other end, so they're not of the same type. So we're not going to end up defining this the same way, and at first we're not even going to define it inside of the user class. We're just going to define it right here. So this might look a little bit funky to begin with, but follow along with the syntax and I'll try to explain myself. So this is going to return an O stream. And the reason it's going to return an OStream is because cout is an object of type OStream. And once we are done with this, we want to return cout so that we can append more stuff to the expression. So if we didn't return OStream, then we wouldn't be able to connect things using multiple operators here. So make sure you return OStream, and we actually want to return a reference to the same object so we don't make copies of it every time. And we can do that by putting the ampersand there. All right, I am correct, it is ampersand. <laughs> All right, back to what we were doing. Now the operator we are going to overload is the two less than signs, also often known as the insertion operator. And this is actually going to have two parameters inside of the parentheses. The first one is going to be C out, the one on the left, and then the second one is going to be the user object, the one on the right. So we're going to have another O stream here, and we're going to take it by reference, and we're going to call it output, and then we're going to have that user object here. All right, so that is how we overload this operator. Now right away, if you want this to just compile, just to see if your syntax is right, you can just say return output. It's not going to work, but it will at least compile. And we still have that code down here that we don't want, so let me get rid of that. All right, now let's compile. All right, so no errors. It seems our syntax is correct, and we've effectively overrid this operator. Just out of curiosity, let's output and see what happens. It does nothing. All right, that's not surprising. And let's just make sure that this user has some data. We'll say user first name is equal to Caleb. And user last name is equal to Curry. We'll also set the status to gold. Obviously, I'm going to be a gold member. I'm premium. All right, so what are we going to do in this operator? Well, we just treat output as if we are working with C out directly. And then we can just define what we want it to look like. So up here, we'll just say output, and then we'll just output user dot first name. We could also put a new line and do the last name as well, if you would like. User dot last name. There we go. 
So that is the output. Let's compile and see if it works. Whoops, I'm treating this function call as if it's a value member, but it's not. So this is actually a function call. So I need to pass in gold as an argument. Sorry, it's an error unrelated to our problem here. <laughs> All right, now when we compile and run, you can see we get first name Caleb, last name Curry. So we've effectively overridden this operator, the insertion operator. Now at the end, we return output so we can continue the insertion and we can put the end line there. Usually I'll leave that up to the caller to do because we might not want to put that end line. So I'll try not to do that inside of the operator overloading. Now you want to make sure you spell things right. There you go. Now user is not going to be changed. So in these situations of operator overloading where there's no changing, you can always label things as const. That's up to you. All right, and you can see it still compiles. Now let's do the same thing with the extraction operator, which is this same thing just pointing in the other direction. So what if we want to take user input and store it in a user object? I'm gonna challenge you to try to figure that one out or at least figure out what the method signature will look like. So pause the video and do that now. All right, let's code it ourselves. First thing, let's go about what it would look like using it. We'll say standard C in and we're going to insert that into user. So this is what we want to be able to do. Now let's overload the operator. What we're gonna do is we're going to say standard iStream, which is the object type of the CN object. That's going to be a reference. And what operator are we overloading? We're overloading this one, the extraction operator. This is gonna take two arguments, an iStream reference called input, you name it whatever, and then it's going to take a user object. And then just to begin with, we're just going to return input and make sure you finish your type there. All right, return input. And all you have to do is use it like it's CN. So we'll just say input and insert that into user.firstName. And then we'll do it again with user.lastName. This will work because this insertion operator when we're working with a CN object is going to skip spaces. So basically all we have to do is say Caleb Curry with a space the first word will go to this one and the second word will go to this one. So let's compile and give it a go. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna comment out these assignments here and see if our program compiles. And it does, so let's run it. Now we can put Caleb Curry and when we press enter, it does not work. Uh-oh, let's figure out what's going on here. The reason this is not working is because we have to pass the user as a reference. So when we do that, it allows us to change this user object. So hopefully you guys caught that when we were writing this out. I actually quizzed you guys and then I ended up giving you the wrong answer. So I'm being one of those annoying teachers that really don't know what they're doing, but <laughs> that's fine. Let's try it again and see if it works. Now when we output it, we can put Caleb Curry and you can see it does output it. So awesome, we just overloaded those operators and it seems to work just fine. Now the downside here is that these operator overloads do not have access to any of the private data of the user. So we can't access like the status, for example. So this video, we just talked about how to get the public stuff. So all of the, the public parts of the class are accessible, but now in the next video, we're going to teach you how to access the private parts. Oh, uh, scandalous, I know. <laughs> <laughs>